moving friends recently I had a video that was talking about the best type of yarn to use for towels that was such a popular video that I decided to do something in a similar vein but instead of towels today we're going to be talking specifically about the best yarns to use for weaving scarves this video is brought to you by the garden path scarf this is one of my most favorite patterns and is one of the best sellers in my Etsy shop this is an easy pattern to work all you need is a bit of patience and a rigid heddle loom you can also work this on other types of looms as well I absolutely love this scarf for its beautiful classic airy look and yet it provides so much warmth at the same time the pattern is also variable you can weave it as a regular size scarf or as a larger scarf and you'll see more about that in this video the pattern for the garden path scarf is available in my Etsy shop and I'll leave you a link to that down below any of the links that I talk about in this video today you will be able to find them down below afterwards if you don't see them just click on the part that says more or show more and the menu will drop down for you so I thought it would be a really great learning tool for some of you to know more about the scarves that I've personally woven what looms I've woven them on and what yarns I like to use for scarves and what I look for in a yarn when I'm planning a scarf. Now this is one of those things that seemed like a brilliant idea at the time but once I gathered my scarf collection together I realized just how many scarves I actually have. It's kind of embarrassing but then I can use the reasoning that well I am a weaving teacher and I do sell my weaving designs and an accumulation is bound to happen I've certainly given plenty away and sold plenty as well this is not all of the scarves that I've ever made but some of them the point of having this collection here today is that I've got a fairly wide variety of scarves and that gives me a lot to talk to you about so what I'm going to start with is my very first scarf that I ever wove and I'm not embarrassed to show you this no it's not perfect and yes my edges are wonky but we all start out like that and it's no use pretending otherwise so without further ado my first scarf some of you have seen this already now this scarf I basically used a lot of the knitting yarns that I already had if you are familiar with my classes with my videos you'll know how much I talk about new weavers starting with knitting yarns because they are so forgiving they're readily available they're usually fairly economical to buy and so many such a huge percentage of people who start weaving have done uh, some other some other type of fiber craft whether it's knitting crochet whatever it is spinning um, and so yes I had a variety of yarns to start out with and I just put them to use on my rigid heddle so I started out with this lighter purple that is a DK weight wool and I warped up with that I didn't do a very long warp I had really no idea how long a scarf should be or how long the warp should be for a scarf or anything like that at that time obviously I've learned a lot since then but uh, then I just started taking all these different yarns from my stash and trying them out now that was a really good exercise for me it taught me a lot of things about how a different yarn is going to look on the same warp and how the edges are not necessarily going to be the same consistency if you're using some thinner yarns with some thicker yarns also that hand spun is a bit different to work with because of its little subtle nuances its thickness and thinness unless you are a very practiced spinner and can get very consistent thickness but I was very pleased with how this scarf came out in the first place as my very first piece and I have worn it quite a bit since I'll stand up so that you can maybe have a look I particularly want to show you my wonky edges so that you know we all start out that way there's some hand spun in there some hand dyed some commercial yarns I just put a little bit of everything in there and then I did a simple knotted fringe to start with another great newbie fringe to do so that's my first one and that was pretty much all wool 
of different widths and sizes and some hand spun, some commercial. So I've got my woolen pile to go through first here. I do like to use wool for scarves a lot, but not all wools are created equal. So the most important thing for me when I'm choosing a wool for a scarf is it's got to be able to go next to my skin. It's got to not be scratchy. I can't stand wearing anything that's remotely scratchy. It drives me crazy. I'm one of those people who's hypersensitive about really comfortable clothes, which is why you will often see me in very plain cotton kind of clothes because comfort is so important to me. So if I was shopping for yarn in a shop, then I would be picking up the yarn and I'd be feeling what it feels like. And a really good test is to just rub it on your cheek. If you rub it on your cheek and there are no prickles at all and it feels soft, it's gonna feel the same around your neck and it's going to be nice to wear. This is a little bit harder to do when you're shopping online. So you might have a little bit of gambling here and there, you're not quite sure. One little tip if you're shopping online is the yarns or the wools that are sold as like baby wool and things like that or um, sensitive wool, they are going to be softer usually than the others, especially if it's sold as baby wool to make baby clothes with and that kind of thing. It's always gonna be a really nice soft wool. So let's keep going on the wool pile. This one is from my neck warmers two ways. I've actually got this as an Etsy pattern and as a class. This is, you might think this is a little bit weird. Oh, it's a really short little scarf, but the idea is it is a neck warmer, not a scarf, even though they're in the same vein. And I've sewn a button here, and then in the weaving of the actual scarf, you weave in a slit, so that when you finish, you position your button where you want it to go. And this is one of my husband's hand-printed buttons with one of his own drawn designs. I've got to give that a close-up, just because it's so cool. So he hand printed he drew that by hand and then um, printed it onto the fabric and then I covered a button with it. And yeah, and so this is a neck warmer. It's like a, you know, slightly different alternative to a scarf. You can wear it over like this, arrange it however you like. But usually you want to show off your button a little bit. And for this yarn, I used a Bendigo Woolen Mills yarn um, it's known as Bloom and it's a wool. It's not as soft as some wools I've used, but it's okay. It's acceptable to wear around the neck. Um, I've wound it here onto a different cone, but you can see that it's a variegated yarn. You can see that in the twist, in different colors twisted together. And it also has a sort of a gradient, you know, the color shifts as you go along and you can see that in places like this where the color gradually shifts. So it's on a solid warp and then the weft is all the color. Um, so it makes it an interesting piece because it's one of those things that makes it look like you've done something maybe a little bit fancy, but you've just woven plain weave and the yarn because of the color shifting works out that way. So speaking about color shifting, Another one, this is another one of my early scarves. Um, this was a DK weight wool, and I wove this on a seven and a half dent heddle on my rigid heddle loom. And what I did is both the warp and the weft are hand dyed, but the, the warp is dyed in this sort of fuchsia color that varies a little bit, but it's fairly solid and then the weft is dyed in the green and pink. And I wove that weft over the top of the more solid pink. And this is the kind of nice color shifting you can get. This would be similar to if you got like a self-striping sock yarn or something like that. A sock yarn would be a different weight, but I'm not talking about the weight, I'm talking more about the colors the way that it's dyed. And then when you weave with it, you have like this subtle color shifting that makes a really unique scarf. So as an example, this one that I showed you before, this is one that I have hand dyed and it's a similar thing. 
that you would get that color shifting especially if you put it on a solid warp so I would start out with a skein of wool and this is one that I've wound myself from a ball and then I'd lay that out and I would be dyeing that in sections so I might do um, let's say this whole section would be pink and then in the middle I do a little section of green and then I might do some more pink and then end up with a little bit of green at the top and that way I have these chunks of color right but then when the yarn's all dried and I'm going to use it and I put it in a bowl then all the colors look more like this more muddled up but then when you weave with it especially if you use it in the weft where you've got these you know sort of repeating widths of the yarn going across you'll get um, the yarn repeating the colors repeating in different sections and it kind of just arranges the colors for you and it's a really nice way to weave because you don't quite know what you're going to get but you know you're going to get something nice I really like to cross that with a solid warp because if I crossed, say if I had the warp and the weft and I crossed these colors, um, it would become a very busy piece and I wouldn't be able to see those little pools or sections of colors as easily. But having said that, if you wanted to cross the warp and the weft just to see what happens, it would be an interesting experiment as well. Now this is another wool scarf. Um, this is actually a cowl scarf, so it's joined, it's a circle. Um, this is a finer wool so it's a fingering weight wool which is an Australian four ply but I've done something a little bit different with this one um, and I'll show you up closer you can see the repeating sections of color so this is actually parts of some hand spun of mine um, hand dyed and hand spun so it's got all of these different colors running through and all I did was when I was warping um, I warped, you know, a section of the grey commercial yarn and then I warped some stripes of my hand spun yarn and the hand spun yarn was kind of a similar, probably just a little bit thicker than the grey commercial but not, not a chunky yarn um, and I would have done this on a 10 dent heddle on my rigid heddle loom. So I just had these colors repeating across and then for the weft I use that same commercial gray entirely for the weft so what you end up with is just this really these subtle stripes um, and the colors are, are dulled down a little bit because they're crossed over with the gray in the weft but they're also really harmonious with the gray because you've already got them in you know sort of wedged in between the gray as you go so that's that's quite a lovely one Speaking of hand spun, uh, this one I made quite a while ago. This is a very skinny scarf. <laughs> this was earlier in my weaving days and I think what happened here was I was a little bit scared of running out of my hand spun uh, because I probably hadn't measured it properly or anything like that. So it ended up being quite long but very skinny. And this one I hand dyed the wool first, then I spun it and then I wove it into this scarf. I believe this was my first hand woven hand dyed hand spun piece so it was quite an accomplishment at the time if you want to see the colors of the hand spun they were like that I think I called this one Monet's garden for obvious reasons and this is one where I actually crossed the warp and the weft and the colors didn't come out too busy um, just sort of variating throughout Again, this is quite nice and soft. Um, that's one thing about hand spun is you can spin it to be softer and you can choose the kind of fiber blend that you want to have if you're really into spinning. So because I've shown you a couple of pieces with hand spun incorporated, I thought you might also be interested to see some hand dyed roving alongside its hand spun yarn. So um, over here I've got the roving that I've dyed in various colors and then I believe I used fractal, the fractal spinning method to make this yarn. 
you can look that up if you want but it's basically arranging the the colors um, breaking the roving off in sections so that the colors arrange in particular ways it's a really nice way to spin um, if you want me to talk if you're interested in spinning and you want me to talk more about that in another video I'd be happy to do that just let me know I'm no expert on spinning and I definitely don't get to do it nearly as much as I would like to these days but I still have my spinning wheel sitting there for whenever I want to and it is a really interesting way to have more of a hand in the process of what you're making now I wanted to show you this scarf this is made of a cotton and this is a fingering weight cotton this is from my color pooling class and I am there are two scarves in the class this one is the one that had more subtle colors okay so in the class I show you how to um, dye your skein and arrange the colors so that you get very specific so the other the other scarf that I was showing you that had the hand dyed colors in sections um, they were in the weft so they were sort of going that way and these colors are shifting sort of this way so it's a different effect longer color shifts it's a really lovely way to do it so the reason I wanted to show you this scarf is because it is made of cotton and because we're talking about scarves today um, one of the things that I've found is that cotton is not as pleasing to me in a scarf as a lot of other fibers are I've woven a few scarves in cotton and I'd have to say from all the scarves that I've woven they're probably the least pleasing now that's going to be a really dependent on a lot of things like your set the type of cotton it is the pattern that you're weaving but what I've found is that it just doesn't make even though it looks like a nice flowing scarf on camera it feels to me a little bit stiff and that never really softened up with wet finishing and wearing so I really like my scarves as I was saying before to be really comfortable but also to have a nice flowing look so this is the only cotton one I've got to actually show you here I think the others have gone elsewhere okay back to wool this is the scarf um, this is a project for the overshot on a rigid heddle loom class now this is a really nice scarf but this is quite a bit heavier so this is what I would call a winter scarf what I did for this one is I used a fingering weight wool for the warp and for the tabby because overshot has tabby so that's my horizontal plane weave and then for the pattern weave which is the blue I used a DK weight wool so that's why the scarf is heavy and also because it's overshot it's bound to be a bit thicker now I'm trying to remember the set that I used for this one uh, I'm thinking it was probably the 10 dent heddle it's a bit hard to remember but I'm thinking if I used fingering weight warp then it was probably the 10 dent heddle and so that that makes a sort of denser scarf as well because that pattern weft of the DK weight is fairly thick but this is a really gorgeous and very substantial scarf I'll bring it in so that you can see the pattern properly it's like a star of Bethlehem and then on the back the back's slightly different but there you can see the two this is the front and this is the back so it's a fully reversible scarf now we have to talk about my absolute fave to wear so this is my garden path scarf this one is actually like a larger version of the garden path scarf so when you buy the pattern for this there are instructions for a regular size scarf but you can actually upsize it if you want to and that's what I did for this one because I really wanted a winter scarf that I could wear around the property all day long and it would keep me nice and warm and that is this is 
really my most worn scarf. It's so long and wide. So I've made it, it's, it's almost like a shawl in its width and length. Let's have a look at that. But it's really so, even though it's airy, it's really, really warm to wear. So I'll show you how I wear it. I double it up and then I take it around my neck with a loop on one side, with my hand through. Then I take one of the tails through and the other tail I tuck in through the loop from the opposite direction. And then I just arrange it like that. And this stays with me all the time. I pretty much wear it every day unless it's in the wash during winter. Um, you will never see me without a scarf around my neck during winter. For, for more special occasions, I will wear one of my other more special scarves. But for everyday wear and for keeping warm, this is the one that I wear. So this is a fingering weight wool. I use a tendent heddle on the rigid heddle loom. Now this uses a finger controlled technique to do the pickup and make the pattern. So you only need the one heddle and like a tapestry needle. So it's not exactly a beginner's technique, but it is easy enough for people who don't have too much experience at weaving to do. And I think that's why one of the reasons this is my best selling scarf pattern in my Etsy shop is it's really achievable and it's one of those things that people weave it for themselves or for a friend and they look at it afterwards and they almost can't believe that they actually wove that. It looks really fancy and it has the look of a knitted scarf which is really interesting because usually weaving is quite different and a lot more rigid than knitting but with something like this we actually have stretchability, just like knitting. So it collapses down a little bit with the design, um, but it's just really, so it's got that really lovely scrunchy feel. I'm gonna take it off because it's not winter yet <laughs> and it's a bit too warm to be wearing a wool scarf, but I will be definitely wearing that in winter. And if you see me in my, um, in some of my other videos in the cooler weather. I will probably be wearing this if you look back on some of my videos. Okay, so now I've got another, this is another hand spun but with commercial yarn as well. So this hand spun um, I did in really bright colors and, and then I paired it with a solid black warp. If we have a close look in, this is a pickup pattern of kind of diamonds. And then if you look on the back, you can see mostly the hand spun. So this is a really lovely soft scarf. The warp is a fingering weight. And this is, I wove this quite a long time ago. So I'm not absolutely sure whether it was on a 10 or seven and a half dent heddle. But I wanna show you also the jewel cowl. This is one of my patterns in my Etsy shop as well. But if you look at the patterns side by side on these two scarves, you'll see they're exactly the same. But they look a little bit different because, well, this one's got a lot going on, hasn't it, with all the colors. It's got the texture of the hand spun yarn, whereas this one's all commercial yarn and two solid colors. So the black in the warp and the blue in the weft. So to talk a little bit more about the jewel cowl. So the jewel cowl was woven on a 10 dent heddle on the rigid heddle loom. And the, all of the yarn is a fingering weight yarn. Now to do this pickup, you use a pickup stick and a heddle rod in addition to your original heddle. The pickup's not hard to do, it's nice and repetitive. And you end up with this really lovely flowing pattern. And I'll show you the back. This is what the back looks like. So it's a really lovely one as well. And this, this is more what I would consider also a winter piece. 
So you can pop it on. And I know some people like to wear them um, as a kind of a vest, like you put it like that and then wear a belt. But me, I'm not a belt person. Um, so how I would be wearing it is fold it over and then doubled over my neck. Hopefully that's not messing with my microphone. <laughs> But yeah, something like that. So it'd be another warm weather, winter kind of cowl. Once again, I gotta take it off because I'm too warm. Okay, so this is one of the last wool specific scarves that I have to show you. This is the candy store scarf. This is also available in my Etsy shop. Fingering weight wool again, and that's for both warp and weft and what I really like about this scarf is it's actually plain weave but this is a perfect example of color and weave where you use specific color arrangements in your warp and in your weft to get what looks like a design it looks like a fancy design but you're actually just doing plain weave the other cool thing about it being plain weave is see how flowy that is it's just really nice and light. So it's going to be warm because it's wool, but at the same time, it's not going to be heavy. It's a really nice, light, flowy scarf. So let me just show you up close some of these color effects. So you can see there from the fringe, the kind of coloring that we've done in the warp. And then we just move through some different colors for the weft. And this is the kind of pattern that we get. Different colors in the border. It's a really nice scarf. It's not hard to do. The only thing that is a little more challenging for this one is um, the colors for the warp will take you a little bit longer to set up, but that's, that's about it. It's very plain sailing once you're weaving. I'm not sure if I mentioned it's a 10 dent heddle with that fingering weight wool.